Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. It is October 2019, just so you know the code reference of the, we're in the 2017 code book. Um, I'll step outside and show you the work I did. If you hear this dumb dog next door, it just barked the whole day. Truly hate that. would love to have people put their dogs away while you work for 10 hours. Anyways, um, what we did here is some simple can lighting. And um, this video is going to be uh, not based on can lights, but um, probably service change arc faults can lighting. So if my SEO guy or my wife's looking, I would really just put this underneath arc faulting um, as well as kind of a service change. Um, anyways, um, yeah, we put can lighting in there. Uh, we put a keyless in here until they decide if they're going to do a ceiling fan. We put ceiling fan rated boxes and wire there. They're not sure what they're doing yet. And then a couple of these cans, which have these eyeball trims they want to do. do. Um, anyways, when you touch uh, lighting like that, you're supposed to arc fault those circuits. Um, we got called out because there was a square D small QO panel here that was burning up. It was a, um, a split bus bar. No main disconnect inside or outside. And then we had a hot water heater sitting right here, uh, pretty much burying the panel. And there was no pan there. Um, so when they took out the hot water heater, they put down below um, a tankless water heater. And then we went ahead and caulked those holes. And then the vent, they didn't even take out. So we took that out and just put a cap and then caulked around that. And I'll show you outside. But yeah, so when we label, very important that someone is counting their circuits. Because we needed some extra circuit space which we're gonna have plenty in the future for a quad here or two full spares and another full spare when they do a kitchen remodel. But when you're interpreting the code, uh, go ahead and come down here. We found that the furnace is with the fridge and the kitchen plugs. So we are supposed to dual function in GFI, arc fault GFI dual function this circuit, uh, number 10, but we can't because a furnace will trip with an arc fault or GFI and they're not supposed to be on a GFI or arc fault circuit for the furnace. So we dropped down to 14.3 because also when they did the tankless water heater, they didn't tell us they had like a little igniter plug there. And so we're gonna probably dedicate that right here. I don't wanna turn that on because I still have to make up that wire down there. I threw down a 14.3 when the a wall was open. We had to cut open this pretty large to get the conduit through and then mudded it the best we could because there was already some drywall cracking, um, especially with the plumbing that was going through. So. Anyways, they're going to get a guy to come in and surface fix that a little bit better. But keeping in mind, uh, why did I put a main breaker in here? Uh, this is what's changing. 230.70A1 says that there has to be in a readily accessible location, meaning back to back or through the wall, that you're supposed to have your main breaker. Well, that's going away in the 2020 code. I guess uh, I talked to the inspector today and they're going to have a fire code um, pertaining to fire department, but basically that your main disconnect on residential has to be outside. So I'll show you how difficult that is. When we got here, there was basically just a little meter, about a square cabinet inside of a round, me or a round meter inside of that. Hey, the dog quit barking, that's great. Um, a lot of you have seen my videos. We already know that we have to have an ISBB, Intersystem Bonding Bridge Bar. We have an eight foot ground rod. They already had a direct bore here because years ago they had a conduit come up and they capped it. And so that comes up. We just had to bend this. Oh, I didn't have my heat box on me, so I used my generator with my little heat gun. That took forever on a schedule 80 inch and a half. So we slipped a two inch over it, had our strap. Second grand rod over here. Now, why did I drive it like that? Because eight foot was taller than this gutter. And we felt from what we talked to the utilities that the direct bore went this way. So we didn't want to be out here. So we drove it at an angle. And our cold water is done downstairs. And it was done right there. So anyways, once that's all up here, we have a main 125 amp. That's all they allowed us to in this house because there's a number four copper coming through this channel in here. And it's already sealed, I can't get in there. 
But uh, yeah, that popped down and then we just fed a hundred amp going back into the house. Um, you know, if Siemens is ever watching my videos, I sure wish you guys would allow this to be a two inch knockout so we could feed through a two out or a four out aluminum in there. That's pretty tricky to do because the space from here to here, you cannot do. This is gonna be utilities and then this is gonna be ours. Um, so the reason why I had to do that is because if I scooted this to try to knock it out here and over, then I had would have had to bend it even more and then my feeders would have been even shorter. They already had to extend them from here up. Um, remember you have to have the bypass uh, lever in here Minimum 230.79 is 100 amp to feed a home. So this has 125 and then 100 amp in the home. So we basically have an extra 25 amps on this bus bar. Later, we can come out here and take 60 amps to the garage for their voltage car. And then they're gonna have a kitchen remodel. So if I get in trouble with any breaker spot, we can run a conduit through the cabinet, drill a hole, and have some extra circuits here as well. This is an 816 circuit panel in here uh, because of the, uh, the teeth on it. And then, in here, this is actually a copper bus bar. There's a full spot and there's some small teeth here. So this is actually a 4020. Okay, so I still have full spots, one, two, three, four, five, five left, or half spots. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spots left in this panel. So um, if you're wondering about any uh, um, the uh, load calculation on that, uh, that's going to be uh, 220.42 talking about that and also 50 in there um talks about 30 volt amperes per square foot and all that but bottom line is minimum of 100 amp this is a small home so we should be fine at 100 and a 125 because it was probably an 80 before that 80 amp um the other thing to keep in mind is that when we come through our house we sticker everything upon request but yeah we are going to do a remodel in here later so we know washer is circuit three with a sticker we like to use these sticker books and we all you never end up using the bottom of one of these so we just use that in here but that's is three this is five and seven that was six coming through here 15 and 17 12 for your plug but yet this light is circuit four pertaining to lighting through here when we do that it helps us to know It helps us to know that washer is supposed to be a GFCI and AFCI. Dryer is not. That's going to change in the code. Uh, if you're going to be below grade or in a garage, all of your 240 volt equipment will be GFCI'd. Um, yeah, uh, garage and dining is going to be arc faulted. Should GFCI it, but when you have one out in the garage, we'll probably just put a GFCI out there later. Um, furnace, again, we got to get that on the dual function a baby blue looking breaker like that and get the furnace off and put it on one of these today. And then dishwasher is supposed to be arc faulted. You could dual function it. That was 15 amp because the wire was 14 gauge. Cooktop, AC. So in the future, when we get into having to do GFCI protection outside, I doubt they're gonna get away with AC units without tripping that in kilns. Kilns maybe will be okay. But a welder? No way. Some of the wood equipment that you have, like belt sanders and dust collectors and things like that, I think GFIs are going to blow out, and I'm going to have a ton of service calls on that in the future. But they're requesting 240 volt rated GFCI protection as well, because you see that in 210.8 on for kitchen equipment for single and three phase and commercial. So keeping in mind, these quads are going to become a little bit more obsolete. Unless you're doing like an AC and a cooktop, um, you could do a 50-30. I do like Siemens because they have 50-30, 30-40, 30-30, 35. They have so many different options of the two-pole option as well to kill the double phases. And then you get in into here, you got your crawl space. Crawl spaces have to be, they don't have to be arc faulted, but that's all I had left on the truck. But you do have to GFCI. And believe it or not, it's cheaper for me to get a dual function than it is a GFCI in Siemens. So I just like to just arc fault it anyways, but you have to because of lights. If the crawl space is something that you have to crawl under and there's a keyless that could hit you in the head, 
Um, from what I understand, someone died a few years ago, the last code edition electrician, and uh, that incandescent stuck in his skull and then it killed him. So we have to now GFCI as of the 2017 code, um, maybe even the 2014, but I, I've been doing it since the 2017. Um, but yeah, here, bath, lights, plugs. Again, you do not have to do your plugs in the bathroom arc vaulted, just GFI'd. But the thing is, is that the lights have to be arc vaulted because they share with the common hallway of the laundry room light in here, which is one light. So you might as well just go ahead and dual function it all. Back porch, you do not have to do outside lights with arc fault, but because it pertains to this back area as well, you have to arc fault. Hall, living, office, kitchen sink plugs, vent hood. Yep, that's 20 amp, that was 12 gauge, that's a dual function. Porch lights, living room, 15 amp. Master bedroom, exercise room, 15 amp. Uh, back porch lights, fan, yep, 15 amp and dual function on kitchen, living, dining, garage, and plugs and lights. So interesting how we somehow had garage lights tied to kitchen and dining area. So when we come in to do a kitchen in here in a year or two, we're already gonna know exactly what everything is. So if they go through and decide to paint the walls and take all the plates and throw them in a box, yeah, they kind of mixed up all our numbers because now we don't know three is washer and who knows, but at least this is labeled. So. If they go and paint, we'll take it off. Hopefully they'll gently take it off and put it right back on. These people are pretty meticulous, but they want to do a huge remodel through here and change the whole kitchen to the other side. So when we get to that point, guess what? We're already arc faulted, dual functioned. And as I checked at the 2020 code, they still aren't gonna make us arc fault the bathroom. Again, if uh, anybody's watching the video from the, um, the NEC board, I really hope you guys on NFPA-70 change that into 10. Uh, 12 that you would actually arc fault garages and arc fault bathrooms. It just makes sense because who doesn't plug in a space heater when they're getting out of the shower in January in Colorado? Everybody does. They use a hair dryer, all that arcs. And then in a garage, there's all kinds of hobbies. Uh, 240 volt, yeah, again, I think on that GFCI protection, that's not going to work. But in the future, I, I hope they come up with an arc fault range and an arc fault cooktop. Um, be nice to have a dual function in the two pole. I can get a two pole, you know, 1520 amp when it's sharing a black and red on a smaller circuit of 1520 amp, but I cannot get a dual function and a larger breaker. And I can't get a dual function period when I need to do, if, if this kitchen area was four and six sharing on the kitchen counter outlets and I want a GFCI and AFCI and they're sharing a neutral already through the wall and we're not demoing all that. I can't get a dual function multi tie So I hope they come out with that because then I wouldn't have to put GFIs in the kitchen still and do it with all these small dinky boxes. Because remember, Article 314 talks about our box fill. And so if we have those old metal masonry looking boxes, those have to be cut out. But worse, if you got glass tile around it, you're not getting it out. But you still got to cram a GFI in there. So it's great for certain applications, but our houses that are in the 90s, when I started in the field towards the late 90s, that's when we had tons of 12-3 going through the walls and dropping them off, you know, fridge and kitchen counter and then kitchen counter and dining. And all of that would have to be dual function for GFI because, again, remember, if the fridge opens up closer than six foot, guess what? You have to GFCI protect. Um, by the way, that one I do not agree with if you guys are watching this because refrigerators like to trip. Not the new ones as much, but the old ones do. And if you have a $10,000 bamboo floor or some beautiful tile and they're out of town and that trips and defrosts, guess what? Electrician owns a floor. So I have not seen refrigerators trip on arc faults, but I have seen them trip on GFIs. So anyways, guys, use some common sense in here, but remember that the code is based upon something brand new. So trying to modify a home from the 60s like this this is like 1962. So this, the, the first edition, the first phase would come here and do all this can lighting. The second was to get, once the water heater was out of here, finally we could get the new service installed and all that got inspected. Now the third that we're gonna do is gonna come in here um, and get grounding on all the outlets. So we're gonna go through the crawl space and try to drill up and the attic and try to drill down and drop in EGC ground conductors. I'm gonna do a second video on that. This one's getting long. We'll talk to you soon, thanks.